What's up guys, John back from Titan, and I'm here with my APRN, Cass Fernandez. So today we're going to cover some of the most common questions that I think Cass gets in his visits. Um, the first one I think is pretty common, right, and is basically, am I married to this therapy? Will I have to stay on this hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy for the rest of my life? You're right, I get that quite often. Patients want to know, once I start this therapy, am I going to be on it forever? So the short answer to that is no, you're not. So when you come to us, we will evaluate your needs for hormones. Right. If you need a replacement type of therapy, we will prescribe one to you. However, our therapies are very therapeutic. So we're gonna approach that in a way that doesn't shut your system down. Gotcha. So we're gonna have gonadal support. We're gonna be controlling your estrogen levels as well. So when it's time, if you decide after years of therapy and feeling mm -hmm. great, you wanna come off, you can do that and we'll safely do that with a tapering down approach. Gotcha. Okay, now with that being said, what we would do is we would lower those levels safely and you will revert back to what you were previously as your hormone levels. Now, mm -hmm. big disclaimer, as we age, our hormone levels begin to decline, okay? Right. So you may not be as high as you once were. However, you can safely come off of these therapies and have your production that you naturally have. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's a good point out there. So you guys ask that a lot. I wanna make sure the medical provider could properly explain it to you guys and, and it's it's really some good information you know people really don't know this information they think uh, once i go on this i'm gonna have to stand this for the rest of my life i've seen this in some forums and online and stuff like that so it's awesome to explain it to people that sure. you don't have to be on this for the rest of your life let's say there's a health issue financial issue something goes on we can help properly get you off the exactly. healthy way um the second question is is you know Am I going to lose fertility or am I going to have a kid on testosterone hormone replacement therapy? Because we might get some, you know, people in their 30s and they still want to have kids um, or, you know, people in general are worried about fertility. What do you think? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, big question, important question. We all want to know that, especially as men, especially as men in relationships wanting mm -hmm. to conceive children one day. Right. So common misconception, you start hormones, steroids, the negative things about them, abusing them. Yes, you can have some issues with them. However, again, our therapeutic approach with medical providers monitoring you closely, giving you gonadal support, yeah. keeping your function where it should be naturally is gonna help you potentially conceive children, right. okay? We have therapies, glutathione and HCG, human chorionic gonotropic hormones, those can help you have strong healthy sperm healthy gonads so definitely we are going to take care of you as best we can to help you with all of your goals even if it is conceiving children awesome awesome so i think that's another big one now what, what do you think is the other big questions that you get I mean, is there anything that sticks out in your head you know that you get a lot of questions why commonly asked, asked question i know you know uh, uh and needles you know does it have to be an injection can it be an oral form can it be a cream can it be a gel for uh, hormone replacement therapy and you know and basically i think oh, yeah. that question is yes right i mean i get i could sit here all day and talk about all the questions i get yeah. but that is an important one because patients want to know is this injectable is this a cream is this a, a lotion right. you know, is this a pill so right. we do offer all of those of yep. course yep. Um, now they're indicated for different reasons specifically per each patient yep. so i will say that obviously injections are where it's at it's very precise way to deliver that medication yep. you know in a manner that you absorb it well now for other patients creams make more sense right. um, and as far as pills go you know that is an option as well right. um, but we will make sure we customize that approach for each patient each one of you right yeah because different people want different maybe administration forms and we can definitely offer that for our patients to customize that regimen form so it's great information there the other thing is uh you know the next thing i would think is 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 testosterone going to make me aggressive or going to turn me into Arnold schwarzenegger 
well, I mean, that'd be great, right, if we could all look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. But <laughs> the truth is, no, it's not going to turn you into a monster. Right. No, it's not going to make you super aggressive. Yeah. Now, that can happen with patients who are unbalanced, okay, right. without being treated by a medical provider. Yes. Hormones do change. They fluctuate. So when you change one, alter one, the other can have an effect. But, again, our therapeutic approach here at Titan, we're going to make sure that your levels are balanced so you have a positive reaction to the treatment and you feel well and optimized so it's all about balance so you're mm -hmm. not going to turn into you know an aggressive person that's mm -hmm. not what we do here at titan medical center mm -hmm. we're going to make you optimize we're going to help you with your health and overall wellness right so these are just a couple commonly asked questions by patients now i think we're going to do some more content along the lines and sure. bring you some more questions and answers of these common questions that patients might want to know the answer too, just like you. So stay tuned. We're going to bring Cass back, APRN, or you might see him on your visit if you become a Titan Medical Center patient. So we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you guys soon. Guys, stay strong out there, stay healthy, and now let's stay educated, okay? Hey guys, John here from Titan, and I want to let you guys know about the Titan Medical Lifestyle Podcast. You can hear us all over the world, anytime you want, right at your fingertips, whether it's on your cell phone, your tablet, or your desktop, okay? You guys can find our podcast wherever podcasts are at, whether it's Google Play, Apple, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, you can tune in and listen to us. And we talk about a number of different topics that you guys are going to love from medical science, to fitness, to lifestyle, fashion, guy stuff, girl stuff, and a lot, lot more. So guys, tune into our podcast every week. We're updating it for you guys. Also, make sure you tune into our social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Snapchat. Don't forget YouTube, guys, for all those great videos the Tight Medical Center has. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys, and if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at 727-389-3220. Make sure you guys also check out www.titanmedicalcenter.com. I'm John from Titan. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about hormone replacement therapy, specifically in hormone replacement therapy, testosterone. So testosterone is a male masculine dominant hormone, but males and females both have this hormone. This hormone is really, really important for a lot of different reasons. And that's for cardiovascular health, it's for energy, it's for brain function, and a lot of different things that testosterone helps in the body. It's always good to have good testosterone levels, right? You wanna make sure they're optimal levels, you wanna make sure they're not deficient levels, that's no good, and you don't want them super high either. It's all about a harmonic balance in the body. And having testosterone in an optimal range will get you more optimal results and you'll have a better quality of life. So, the main question I get is, John, how do I take testosterone, okay? so. There's different forms and methods that you guys can take as far as testosterone. There's options out there. Now, the first option is probably the best option in my opinion. Um, and a lot of different patients also agree with us. And this is usually the protocol with our doctors and medical staff that they do. They usually recommend injections. Now, injections are great because injections, you can change the dose at any point in time. You can have the frequency change in the days that you inject your testosterone replacement. And you can usually keep the levels pretty even keel. Okay. Um, now, there is a needle involved and sometimes that scares some patients away. They might have a needle phobia. They might have never done this before and they might just be scared altogether. 
So that's okay. And now a lot of patients, I would say seven out of 10 patients have never done an injection before coming to tight medical center. And now they're doing these injections usually by themselves, um, you know, in the comfort of their own home or bathroom and, and doing them by themselves and, and making sure that everything is good to go there. So it's a really good, simple way. And it's really recommended by tight medical center to do it that way. But there's options like we talked about. Let's talk about those different options. The first option is sublingual. So there is definitely some sublingual troches and sublingual tablets that you can utilize for taking your testosterone replacement therapy. Now, this is a little bit different from an injection because you're using micronized testosterone um, and it doesn't have an ester. It's not a cypionate, it's not a propionate. So at that point, it's micronized, it's fast acting. And this is something that you would need to take daily, right? To make sure that your levels are going up and everything is good there where an injection, you can take it and you're gonna have a frequency of days in between before you take your next injection. So it's not a constant thing you have to do every single day. Now, absorption rate and transportation rate, that's a little bit different too. With the injection, you're gonna get a higher absorbency and a faster transportation rate. With an oral version of sublingual, it's gonna be a lower transportation rate and a lower absorbency. Now, it'll still work um, now you can blood test to make sure this is working and make sure you're dialing in on your dosage too as well. We'll do that here at Type Medical Center for our patients. Um, but if you're not one of our patients and you maybe want to go this route, that's what you can do to really dial yourself in is the blood test um, after you take your dose. Uh, the next thing is creams. Okay, so there's creams out there or gels. Um, that you can rub on certain areas um, and that will absorb through the skin and go into the bloodstream and you will get the benefit of testosterone replacement therapy. Now, this too, like oral, will have to be taken every day for consistent levels, okay? Now, a little bit different here because with a guy, we're hairy in some places. Now, you have to be consistent of where you're going to rub in this cream or gel. Now, women can also do the sublingual. Women can also do the cream and gel and injections sometimes, right? But with this, if you have hairy arms like me, okay, you're rubbing this cream in, uh, it, the absorbency is not going to get in as good it is with an area that doesn't have as much hair, right? So um, you can rub this or find different places that you can rub this on your body. Now, the next thing with this that you have to think about if you have a family and kids or dogs or anything like that is that when you rub this cream or gel on, it's gonna get on your hands. That's one, so make sure you wash your hands afterwards thoroughly so you're not rubbing this on a pet, picking up on a child, or you're rubbing this on your, your significant other, maybe it's your wife or whatever it may be, so they're not absorbing this cream or gel that you may have on your hands still. Um, you know, so that's the main thing with that. So you gotta make sure that you're keeping everybody safe, you're wiping this on an area. Now let's say if you have kids, you have dogs, you have cats or pets, if you don't, then you're good to go. Just make sure you wash your hands anyway for cleanliness and sanitary purposes, okay? All right, after that, we go into pellets. Now pellets, you know, they might seem like a good way to do testosterone or hormone replacement therapy because you just go into the doctor or, or medical provider, they slit you open, right, basically, and they stick these pellets in you. And these pellets have dosages of these different hormones. Now. The difference between injectable oral and cream and gels is that you can mess with the dosage at any time or you can stop it at any time. When you go with pellets, all right, and this is, I think, a downfall in my opinion, is that when you go with pellets, you're on that ride no matter what. So if those hormones are maybe too much or maybe too less, you're on that journey and you're gonna keep going up. And usually medical providers or doctors don't blood test you till after these pellets are already done pretty much. Um, so you gotta make sure that these levels are correct. The other downfall in my opinion is that when they hit you with these hormones, um, they have these high doses in there, especially for females. And females what happens is, is they spike up really high. And what we've seen here is specifically in testosterone, getting into very high levels, um, manly levels. So when we're talking about this and you're going to exogenous levels of testosterone, especially for a female, you come into maybe some troubles down the road of negative side effects. So deepening of the voice, hair in these areas or, or areas that you would not usually grow hair, uh, and clitoral enlargement. So these are things that possibly could not go away. All right. And you might have to live with these. 
uh, negative side effects. So you want to make sure that your levels are good, optimal, but not crazy exogenous uh, and physiological. So at that point, you don't want really crazy high levels. But with guys, the same thing. You take these pellets in and your levels spike. Now it's three months, but in between that three months, what do you think is happening? You feel really good at the start and then it starts going down starts going down starts going down because your levels are coming down and so you get your next pellet inserted and then it boosts back up so think about a roller coaster ride up and down up and down so this is not a good thing for the body you want to be able to go to a consistent level and stay there that way you're feeling good every day you're feeling consistent in your mood uh, you make sure that you know everything is working properly and everything is balanced properly and once you get to the right dosage uh, whether it's oral or injectable uh, cream or gel all you have to do is make sure you sustain that level and consistency with the medications you blood test with that and as long as you're consistent with the way that you did it before you should be getting the exact same results per se or within the ballpark within your levels and consistent in all your results as far as mood libido concentration all these things should be the exact same over and over and over and as long as you don't change anything now if you change things up or miss days things can be adjusted and maybe in a negative way or you might get symptoms um, that's totally you know in the ballpark of what could happen with you so just make your be make sure you're being consistent with your regimen and everything should be good make sure you guys are picking a good route or form of taking testosterone replacement therapy make sure you're going to somebody that's credible that knows what they're doing and has been doing this for a long period of time um, that's what we're here for type medical center we'd be happy to help you guys out you guys can call or text us at 727-389-3220. Check out our website, www.tightmedicalcenter.com. YouTube, we have all the videos on our therapies and a lot, lot more. So I'm John from Titan. I appreciate you guys tuning into this video and stay tuned for a lot more content from me and Titan Medical Center. Thanks, guys. What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. So if you guys don't know what Cupid's Corner is, this is our segment, our part of the show, that me and Sharice like to go over tips and tricks to help you guys levitate and bring your relationship to a whole new level. Or just reignite that fire that may be, you know, diminishing out a little bit or possibly gone. So... Relationships go through different stages, different levels, you know, all these different things. And you get into a relationship, you're going to have to deal with maybe some of these problems and some of these issues. So me and Sharice have used our great experience and the many experiences from our friends and family to give it to you guys as knowledge so you guys can utilize it to benefit your relationship. Okay? <laughs> so uh, this one is pretty good. Now we're in, you know, November. We're coming up on December, so what does that mean? Holidays. Holidays, right? <laughs> and what does that mean? Family time. Family time. <laughs> so whether you're just getting into a new relationship, right, or you're married uh, or engaged or whatever it is, uh, domestic partners, whatever it may be, you are going to probably have to deal with the in-laws mm, or right. the other person's family or even your family too, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. You too, right? Yes. You might have to deal with your own family. You're going to have to deal with their family, you know? And not all family is fun. That's right. what we're going to call this segment. So uh, not all <laughs> family is fun. And, and what we mean about this is, you know, you might not be a fan of the family. Mm -hmm. and, and how that works is, is, you know, when you first meet the family, you might not like them. For certain reasons whether it be a shallow reason like their home the way it's decorated or something you see you just don't like or their political views or whatever it may be it could be something very serious it could even be like you know something like their personality or the way that they come off you know how some family members they come off a little abrasive I don't know if it's just maybe a protective kind of thing. For Watch their... out, Peter. Early warnings. <laughs> for a protective thing for their that's children. That's by the way. Yep, that's our baby. Uh, my baby forever. Um, but, you know, 
they might be a little overprotective and when they do come off they come off a little abrasive and it might kind of rub you the wrong way right mm-hmm. right you know i it's true so <laughs> you know or they could just be they could be irritating okay it just <laughs> is what it is not that my my in-laws are irritating or anything like that <laughs> but i know people that have irritating in-laws and i feel for them like man you know I, I i don't know man if i could be doing with this like you know i just go over there and i have some drinks and just stay to myself and at that point you know the night is done i haven't fought with anybody and i'm out the door and back home in my own bed and my own kingdom (laughs) i don't have to deal with them anymore to hear them but you are possibly going to have to deal with in-laws during the holidays you know Mm -hmm. even with COVID around you're going to either have to deal with them possibly you know in your house or you go over their house it just depends on your families do it Mm -hmm. or even virtually yeah you know just having their face just say that you know you lost power or something and just beep and then it's over. You possibly could. <laughs> I don't it's, foresee that happening. But that'd be a little bit easier to do, I guess. <laughs> easier than going over there and be like, oh, man, we got to go. You guys have been here 30 minutes. I know. We just, you know, we really got to go. We have this next thing we got to do. Yeah. Me and John have done that on quite a few different occasions <laughs> just because we had to at least show face. You right. know, it's one of those things where right. you kind of got to show face. And if you don't show face, it's disrespectful, especially oh, like, you know, the old timers and time. people that are old school or even, you know, the Greeks or the Indians. You know, they are very family oriented. Mm -hmm. So if you don't show up and at least eat one plate of food, (laughs) it's insulting. It can be disrespectful in their eyes. In their eyes even, you know, and and then it turns into you didn't stay long enough and then it's just one thing after the other. At least you showed up, you showed face, you had conversation, you showed the respect level. I think that's what it's really about. Not about the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously more time might be better in their eyes or you, there's never enough time in the world, okay? And for anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, But, (laughs) But, but doing the, the right thing and, and supporting your loved one. You know, that might be, you know, like their dad might be there, everything to them. If your wife feels like that or mom or whatever it is. So at that point, at least showing the respect of going over there and supporting them. Even if you don't like the family, you're going to have to deal with them. You can't cop out of every situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I know that, you know, like my brother is a good example. I'm going to bring him up, might as well. <laughs> so he's married to an awesome woman now, Courtney. Great kids the whole oh, night. Boy, Before the he was married to this, this chick named Sandra, right? And Sandra did not like my family. It just is what it is. She liked <laughs> me, but she couldn't stand my dad. And she didn't like my mom because my mom, <laughs> you know, know she's going to be like protecting her. mom. Right? Everybody likes Everybody John's likes my mom. mom. But my mom will tell you like it is. And if she don't like something that's going on, she's definitely going to let you know <laughs> one way or the other. And back. some people don't like that. You know, some people can respect that, but some people don't like that. So she never wanted to come around. Uh, when the, when they came down, you know, here, when we lived down here on vacation, she would stay at the hotel or she'd bring a friend along to, like, do these, like, family. It was just kind of weird, you know? And, weird. and she, I understand she just didn't want to be a part of the family. She didn't want to be around the family. She could care less. But her side, obviously, she wanted to spend all the time with and wanted Clint always there and supporting. So it's just an example that I'm setting out there. Don't be like that. Reciprocate. Even mm-hmm. if you don't like the family, low key, your wife knows, your your husband knows that you don't like the family. You're doing it for them. And that's yeah. the real reason, because you love them. Right. That's the whole reason that other part of the family is there, because you chose to love that significant other person. So if you really don't want to deal with either one, you know, that's <laughs> on you. But if, if you do love your significant other, you're going to have to deal with the family or in-laws or anything that comes with it, with it baggage-wise. And that could be kids and ex-husbands or whatever it may be, too, mm-hmm. which I'm glad I never had to go down that route. Mm-hmm. I never want to go down that route. Yep. But a lot of people do because of what what's going on out there right now. So a lot of relationships don't last. The blended you families. Know, the blended families. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. And I give a lot of respect uh, for people that raise other people's children that aren't their own, but they take them in as their own and they do that. Mm-hmm. So that's another big one with me. But, you know, you gotta you got to support your partner. And at that point, you're going to have to suck it up, eat some food. If you have to, have a couple drinks. Put a smile on your face. Put a have small face, talk. And then at that point, just get through the night, <laughs> get through the day, and then go home and re- relax. And then you can complain about it later to your wife or husband on the way home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't that the truth? But don't be mean about it, okay? 
Uh, don't make them feel bad about it. That's another thing. Oh, you're making me go over to your, your mom's house or your dad's house. And they just feel bad about it, too. too. And that's the person that's their parent. That's the person that maybe raised them and they love and they care about, too, as much as you. So don't make them feel awkward or, you know, uh, or bad about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's a big thing. That's huge. That's it's huge. Really it's, if you love your significant other, you're going to have to suck it up. You know, there's going to be times and things that you don't like that you just have to do. Yeah. This happens to be one of them, you know, so for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, if you guys have to do these get togethers and everybody's usually what you try to do at some point is try to get all the families together, you know, so if you're married, it's nice nice. if you can, you know, is to get your, his family and my family is what we tried to do, you know, a couple of times and get everybody together under one roof. So that way you're not just having to hop houses, you know, and go from one house to the next house, to the next house, to the next house, you know, especially, I mean, we still hop houses. in our scenario, it was, it was really messed up because when my dad was around, so my parents didn't get divorced until I was 21. Both of our parents divorced at 21. And he was another 21. another thing that we have just in random. common. Yeah, just common, you know. Yeah. And so he was 21 when his, when his parents got divorced. So when these... <laughs> these special holidays came oh up. Oh my god. We had to go and visit with Peter, right? So we have Peter. Yeah. We had to go and visit John's mom. Yep. Spend an hour and a half, two hours there. Yep. Drive, you know, back to see my mom, you yep. know, and that was over in Wesley Chapel. We're talking about an hour drive from John's mom's house, yep. right? So go see my mom, my grandma, you know, my uncles and everything over there. And then we had to go see my dad. And then, you know, from my dad, we had to go back to his dad. And then we had to split it all up. So it was just, it was a lot of traveling in one day. A lot of traveling, <laughs> you know, a lot of miles, a lot of eating. Um, but, you know, again, and then you try to get them together. And we would try to do that, too. And then, you know, it's basically four different parties at that point. Uh, plus us, which would be five different parties. <laughs> uh, but at that point, what would happen is they would start bickering sometimes back and forth. And I think everybody's been through those family bickering or fights. I don't know. Yeah. I, everybody I I've have. talked to has usually went through one experience like mm-hmm. that. And, and trust me, my, my brain was no different. Mm-hmm. Had both sides of the family. I mean, what, my dad's side of the family was in Greece, so really not that side. But my mom's side of the family, but all her brothers, sisters, and everybody, you know, just eventually would turn into an argument or fight <laughs> of some kind. Um, but always a good time. It's always a good time. Hey, listen, you always come back with great memories from these family gatherings, even with the in-laws. There might be something funny they do that you guys can make an inside joke about and kind of laugh about. So just take it for what it is. Do the right thing. Support your partner. Not everybody's a fan of the family. But yeah. you can't choose your family sometimes, too, because you choose your loved one, and that can't. comes a part of the package. you got to do it. If you love them, you'll do it. You'll suck it up, and you'll do it. And you know what? You'll even tell them. Yeah. You know what? I'm doing this because I love you. So hopefully <laughs> this tip and trick, not a fan of the family, helps you guys out in dealing with your issues possibly with your family or the in-law's family or significant other's family, the girlfriend, you know, the, the fiance, whatever it is at that point in time, you can deal with it. And if you ain't married, you ain't really attached to it. So you might so at that point, to... you might be changing your mind. Hopefully, <laughs> you hope it's not that bad. <laughs> but, but hey, you never know, right? Um, so guys, keep it locked. Keep it tuned. Every Sunday, Cupid's Corner, me and Sharice are going to be here, right? If you guys don't have cable in Florida, so you guys can't watch us on ABC at 11 a.m., you guys can always check it out on our Tight Medical Center Facebook page and our YouTube page in full, unedited, and no commercials for you guys, all right? (laughs) So we'll see you guys next Sunday, Cupid's Corner, 11 a.m. I'll see you then.